got you stuck off the, the realness, r- r- realness. Ladies and gentlemen, we're live. <laughs> good morning, Bushwick. Good morning, Bushwick. How are you guys God doing? It feels uh, good, bro. This lovely morning. Uh, what's today? Today's the 12th, right? Today's the 13th. 13th. Oof. We did two shows yesterday, bro. We did. I really we thought did. Uh, today was the 12th, yeah. We did live TV two times yesterday. Two times. It felt weird. It felt weird. It feels weird now. I mean, two days in a row. <laughs> Tomorrow will be three. I mean, I'm definitely getting used to it. Yeah, it's I'm getting a, used to the idea more than anything else because they're still waking up and, yeah, and having waking to. Waking up, it just, it's gonna take a, it's gonna take some adjusting too. But uh, <laughs> you know, was the funniest thing is that I'm used to wearing the same shit all the time, bro. Like now, yeah. now we're we're forced to like really to remember what I wore yesterday. I'm gonna have to like have a pile and keep everything completely separate just to remember what I wore the day before. Because I, sometimes I remember Yo, which shirt did I wear yesterday, like. And now it's like, you know, I have limited supplies. So it's like, we're, we're definitely looking for sponsorships. Man. Want to put that one out there real quick. Yeah, definitely. We want you guys to know. Up and coming clothing lines. If we got any clothing lines in Bushwick, man, you guys need to. The clothing lines in Bushwick looking for a greater exposure. Really it's goodmorningbushwick at gmail.com. You got to yeah. hit us up. Hit us up. Let us know. Uh, you know, we're open to uh, ideas. <laughs> we're open to uh seeing your blueprints and if we can give any advice or any input on some designs if we could get a custom shit going then yeah man i still want to do the custom uh the custom rolling papers that's another thing yeah man i always uh i always wanted to do custom varsity jackets you know me the uh the athlete in me i always want to do custom varsity jackets where will we get that done i don't know man you know truthfully i, I, I wouldn't know honestly we got to look into that. We actually have a guest coming on the show later on. Yes. And this is why we have this beautiful blue microphone just set up right here. That's for Dave Pitt. Dave Pitt. We'll have uh, our first we guest had, on we had, we had the We had the privilege of meeting him at, on Saturday. At, uh, at All The Way Live. Uh, and we're going to have the well-dressed villains come on, on later Friday. on this week. Yes, we have Rob, the well-dressed villains, on Friday. So let's talk about yesterday for a second. Because, like we both mentioned, this is a brand new thing for both of us, being able to wake up in the morning and then come do TV over here. Do something we love. Um, It's a very, uh, first off, it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm very grateful and thankful for it. And uh, just the feeling of waking up knowing, hey, this is what I'm doing this morning. Like, actually, you know, it's weird. We always talk about people doing stuff they love, but uh, waking up again and do this and not having to go do something else. Um. Very, not having to go do something else. That's the biggest thing right now. It's like, or if we just stay consistently doing this, then everything is going to fall into our laps. Everything. Everything is going to fall. Like, just, I mean, all the pieces will fall into place as they should. Like, there's no more, you know, th- we usually have a hole in the boat. There's always something that's leaking through. There's always something that's bringing us down. And it's like, right now, we don't have any of that shit. Right now, it's literally sky's the limit. Yeah, sky's the limit, man. See, we got Danny behind the the uh, barista bar with it. Hey, Danny, can we can we get a, a cappuccino and what do you want a, a water? Uh, can I get a tea? I'll try a tea today. We definitely need to support this this place and, yes. and the fucking coffee here. And uh, just bro. so everyone knows, uh, we're actually live in Bushwick right now. Even though uh, from first live Bushwick. At uh, 219 Central Avenue in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn, New Central. York. 219 Central. 11221. Uh, you know. It's right off of Myrtle. So if, if you know Myrtle Avenue, and that's one of the major avenues in this neighborhood. Like, it's, it's one literally, of the major avenues in Brooklyn. Yeah. It's one of, I it mean, stretches it tra- all the way down. It stretches like, to Queens. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the major avenues in Queens, for that matter. Straight down Glendale. It stops at what, Jamaica? Uh, it stops, I want to say, at, it stops at like Jamaica. Woodhaven. Woodhaven Boulevard. I no, because even past Woodhaven Boulevard, you got Forest Park on this side, but all that entire stretch is Myrtle still Myrtle. Still goes. I never. What happens is Jamaica and the train station is going this way, and it meets like this. 
So there's a precinct there. There's a couple of bus oh, stops yeah. there. I, like I thought it just like right to right there where you get to the jacket. That's as far as I thought Myrtle goes. Nah, nah that should stretch. It goes further. I and when no you idea. drive the other way, it'll take you straight down yeah. towards the bridge. Yeah, it'll take you straight to the Brooklyn, not Brooklyn Manhattan Bridge. I apologize. So people need to just explore your neighborhood. This entire thing was possible because we decided to explore our neighborhood. Yes. And not, not go into any situation on some. I, I don't want to work with people. I, I don't want to... Like, no, you have to be receptive to, to new ideas. You have to be receptive to to the idea of taking a risk. If you're not willing to take a risk, then you get no reward. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, I think, why they're saying, uh, you know, high risk, high reward, low risk, low reward, man, you know. You know, you have to... You know, it's calculated risk, I always call it. Take calculated risk. Definitely calculated risk, but... Don't go out there and a just, lot of you people know, do risky things on a whim, thinking, "Hey, taking a risk, it'll pay off." But uh, it goes back to what <laughs> what Steve Harvey said. Steve Harvey he did a, a video where he was telling people that they should jump because you're never gonna know if you could fly if you don't jump. You're never gonna open your parachute if you don't jump. He gave all these different things, and it's true. Most people stand on the ledge and they're just fucking afraid to try yeah, anything. The they're afraid to do anything. I want to. Uh, you know, it's just, I mean, we, we brought up yesterday, uh, I think we brought it, was it here? Or I might have brought it up on both, both sure, things, but uh, complacency. So yeah, I don't think people want to see uh, all see the gray. Hair. Come on, bro. I'm going to keep the hat on. I didn't, I, I didn't even brush crazy. my hair. I'd be like, I mean, now that I've had my hat on the entire time, like, it's just going to, I don't know. Nah, Actually, the gray. You can't really see the grays you can't, coming in there. camera. I think, no, I'm going to let the hat go. I mean, if, if if they want to zoom in, we can get some grays. I think, I think right. when I think you go the to end the, the tight show. cut, you'll see it. If you go to <laughs> the tight <laughs> cut, they'll show. But I'll, I'll keep the hat off for now. By the end of the show, you're going to see all the grays. <laughs> You know, it's a part of growing up, man. Do, do you get them in? Yeah, I see yeah, them in yeah, the beard. They're worse than the beard. I think they stand out more in the beard. Um, I, I I don't. Like, I, as soon as I find one, I'll rip that shit out. You know what? I'm starting to believe the rumor, uh, not even the rumor, but the myth. It's like an old tale that if you pull a gray, more gray eventually grows in its place. But I, I haven't had that issue. I used to pull my grays when I saw them, like, a lot. Eventually you will, sir. I mean, I mean eventually everyone does. But I've been pulling out gray hairs for the past five years, and I'm still clean. Shit. Lucky you, bro. Lucky you. Exactly. But then again, I'm always like... I feel like every time I go to shave, I see more and more gray, just like, where'd this come from? <laughs> and it's coming in heavy on top. It is, it man. Wasn't, it wasn't but, uh, always like that. I feel like it works for me, though, so... But that was a product of the last two years, because... The last few years, I feel like it's really accelerated it itself, uh, the grays. I feel like it's... Once uh, we got into entertainment... <laughs> Once we got in yeah, entertainment, once we, once we other radio. things in life, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say it's been heavy, uh, like at accelerated pace. Like in the last two years, I'll say the last four years, it's really since we started doing radio. Really, yeah, about twenty four. I'll say it started around twenty fourteen. It was the stress of doing live broadcasting. Not just that. I'll say that in other, you know, life stressors. Life stressors. Here we. Go. This is a nice, beautiful thing right here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. He even sugar. brought the goddamn sugar. My yeah. man. Man, we got... Can, can we uh, show this? Can, what, what, what's the, what's latte it? art? You got some latte art going there? Yeah. Which, which, which camera are we doing over here? I don't heart. know if they can see that. I don't uh, want to angle it too much. But he did the heart on top. And that's love. <laughs> so cheers. What was it? Was it Dave Pitt said earlier? Toast in the morning? <laughs> Here's a I'll, I'll wait for you to get your drink. Yeah. Hey. I'm not gonna be an asshole. <laughs> I still gotta put sugar in it, anyways. Yeah. So, matter of fact, while we uh, while we get these drinks squared away, I'm Danny, gonna... can I get a tea? tea? Yes, can I get a tea, please? He wants a tea. Thank you, sir. So let's just remind people that uh, what this show is. We're gonna run the commercial, and um, it's Good Morning Bushwick. It is Good Morning Bushwick, morning. and it's it's another great morning. A jolly, jovial start to your day. We'll be right back after this. Yes. This coffee is delicious. <laughs> you know, I don't really drink coffee. <laughs> this is what you come out with? This coffee is an empty cup. That's what you come out the gate with on me, man? I mean, it is coffee for music people. And music, music for coffee, coffee people. A good coffee will wake you the fuck up in the morning. Remember you know what else will wake you up in the morning? <laughs> good morning, Bushwick. Hosted by us two. But in Roche. I mean, here at First Live. Where is First Live? Bushwick, baby. You're killing me, 
bro. You're killing me right now. Like, <laughs> first live from? Bushwick. We're from Bushwick. We are Bushwick. Pick up your damn cup and pretend you're drinking the coffee. Here at first again. live Bushwick. Do it again. Do it again. You know what else will wake you up in the morning? Good morning, Bushwick. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> right, right now, are we cutting a promo or are we, or, or are we live? No. <laughs> Where can people go to find out what's happening in Bushwick? Buttonroach.com. And firstlive.us. Mmm, this coffee is delicious. Yes, it most certainly is. <laughs> You know, we were speaking about it yesterday, but again, if you guys have not seen this, dang, we got to turn this into an app. We got to get this on the app store, and, and we got to add a functionality that people can check check off all the venues that, that they've, they've played, and then they'll get like something out of it. Like, because this one of the best books I've ever seen in my life. Like, turn it the quest for people. This, this shit is so nostalgic. Just being able to it's the musician's quest. Relive all those venues. Hit all the venues and you'll unlock a secret prize. We've been to a lot of different venues, even as just spectators. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy as as a spectator seeing how many venues in that, you know, I've seen shows at. And uh, it's crazy. What was the last big show we went to together? I, I can't say. I, I would I would guess all the way live. And now I'm seeing it in camera. I'm, I'm, at, I'm, I'm back. He <laughs> put the hat back on. <laughs> My hair looks crazy right now. <laughs> Nah, That's how fast you, you can get me self-conscious. Right, you look alright, bro. Look, I'm wearing fucking blue. I always usually wear black, you know? Yeah. I'm wearing colors. I'm, I'm trying to keep up yeah, appearances I try to mix right in now. color every once in a while. So we got to remind the people, if you got a, a clothing yeah. line, you know, we were speaking well, about this you, yesterday, Danny. but we'll definitely support any uh any local. Yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, I'll keep this. I'll keep this. Yeah, want to support the local people, man. There's a lot of local clothing shops now, especially on the Wilson Ave Strip, going towards Lantern. I mean, there's a lot of clothing shops in Bushwick, period. Now, man. There are a lot, man, and a lot of uh, original designs, man. Um, there's a lot of places. There's like a cluster of places by um by Pine Box, and they're all like, but they're all like basement shit, and that you all you see is the sign on the wall that says. You know, walk downstairs or the second door to the right or some shit. And if you go in there, you're going to find some hipster shit. That, yeah. What, what you said? Hipster grungy? Uh, what, I, what I say yesterday? No, it was a hipster grungy. That's hipster what it was. Hipster grunge. And fashion is... I mean, I mean fashion... You know, Self-explanatory. That, that's you yours, people. man. That's your artistic expression, the way you choose to dress, man. That's why I, I like to see more people be unique with what they do, man. A lot of people see someone else doing it and they choose to. You know, that's how I want to dress. I want to mirror that person i want to emulate that person i like to see a lot more people just uh be themselves man go out and be you you know stop trying to you know do what you see co copy what you see on us weekly or whatever whatever magazine whoever spread draw inspiration from it yes but be yourself I that's why pop-up that. shops are so important because pop-up shops allow people to just create product bring it to market and get public opinion like in a matter of a weekend and yep. you don't you don't need like crazy shit for that. You you don't need that. You can set that shit up anywhere. There's wasn't it in Pine Box that they were doing um they had the pop up shops for all the vegan people. They uh, I think they do it like is it every other Saturday or like once like it's like a certain it was a set Saturday of a month and it was all the like vegan you know pop up shops that would and we saw I mean we brought stuff there before like there was a there's like a like a I forgot it even what spilled it was. out into the into the street like they had carts in the street carts, they, everyone man, had their own a, desk and and they were selling their goods it was or almost like a a mini marketplace yeah like a mini farmers market like it, it was a mini vegan farmers market like it was mini vegan hipster farmers market that would be and, the best way to describe and everybody it. there was drinking uh, bloody marys yes <laughs> that, that was the dream and that was like that, a thing uh, after because it's, it's like a big sad, ass celery after drinking Fridays, shit. you know, come out, get what you need, you know, if you need your, you know, because a lot of these things aren't things you'd find, you know, in supermarkets that made, you know, it's gluten free, like back then, you know, I think those big now, GMO free, soy free, like people really like, you know, people, sometimes people are allergic to almost everything and people have like crazy food allergies and a lot of it people say it's because, you know, a lot of stuff in food. So, you know, before it became bigger and you have now a lot more, you know, I want to say major chains that carry you no know, more vegan, more GMO free, more you know whole. I think it was the, the more information people had access to, the more they started to care about it. Yeah, because back in the day, nobody really gave a shit about that. No, nah. 
we was eating if you go to my family's house in puerto rico they was killing the animals right there and not even getting rid of the blood like they, they'll save the blood and then turn that shit into something later on like and now <laughs> that's some savage shit nowadays. Like. That's uh, that's using it all. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's not letting anything go to waste. Bloody like. sausage. Yeah, that's something. I mean, even out here, people eat that bloody sausage piece that serve it. So you know, it's not it's the not tongue, it. even the eyeballs, bro. They was uh, like the shit was crazy now. No, but uh, it's just those places where it happens. It's just you know, for some places that's in a brutal honesty. So, uh, but I th- I think. It's it's all relative to location too. Yeah, it's relative to location. You know, resources. Cause um, I saw a video on World Star. I think it was like two weeks ago, and they was they was first of all they was beating the shit out of the rats. They had a bowl of rats, of rats. That, that that were like still alive, and they would take them by the tail and whack them on the floor. I guess just explode their insides. Then they sh- started shaving all the hair, and they started cleaning them shits up and boiling them and. And then they was like making soup and 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 and. and I mean, some places delicacy, man. Some places can say. I mean, you see, like when we were younger, we thought it was like crazy. But uh, you know, you remember all the uh, encyclopedias when we were younger in elementary school. All the places that eat rats and ants and grasshoppers. Like even it got to the point where uh, in Seattle at uh, Mariners games, they like like went to like do a. It was like supposed to be a gimmick, but they opened like one of those like, like like with all the insects. And, like, they ordered a supply for the season, and they thought, like, it'll last. And, like, in the first week, week and a half, they, like, it zoomed because people, have like, loved it. It was, like, grasshoppers or something or cockroaches or, like, chocolate dusted. Like, it was it was, a, it was a crazy, but you, you wouldn't think at a baseball game this is what people are going to love. And they just sold out, like, like that. Delicacy. They, like, some places considered it delicacy. To us, it's like, ah. But, you know, some people, some people it's like, nah, like. Remember that time? There was a point in time when we was really like, I mean, it was more me than you, because I eat cereal or ate cereal more than you. Oh man! But when we, everybody started losing their shit, finding the metal fragments in the cereal. I never like people. I, I never saw that man. Like I don't know what cereals. Like I saw videos of it online. I remember seeing it shared heavily, like Facebook. I remember like early YouTube was a big thing. It was brand. It was like it, it was in the raisin brand, and then we checked. Um, like I didn't. Cin- really it was a cinnamon brand. toast crunch. No, it was, it was I one of those with checks yesterday, and it, it didn't. You know, I, I still eat cinnamon. I eat cinnamon toast. That might be uh, one of my favorite because it's, it's you know after ignorance fruity is bliss. pebbles. That might be my favorite cereal. But like I, I'll say, I, I'll say one thing. Like a lot of the cereals, I want to say that we ate and enjoyed as kids, don't taste the same today. They I don't, don't know. It's because they took out a lot of it. Now says no GMOs, no all this, no artificial colors. I don't know it's, if it's because of what they took out to make it healthier. It doesn't taste the same. <laughs> But like like I'll tell you for one like one cereal, I don't know if anyone agree with me, and this is the, the, the big kid in me talking, but a cereal I love and this is part of it, tricks. You know, silly rabbit tricks are for kids. And you know, now <laughs> people are joking about it. Did they really change, you know, the colors and it's no longer the fruity like shapes or are we adults now? We can't tell what's going on. I've always been addicted to cocoa pebbles. Uh, and back in the day when you poured a bowl of cocoa pebbles. You you got the nice chocolatey milk at the end, but the cereal stayed chocolatey throughout the entire time. The milk would turn chocolate, but the cereal would at least still look like chocolate. Yeah. Now you pour the milk, and it's almost like dye coming off the flakes. Like the cereal becomes chocolate while the cereal's still hard. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had that. Like like but I, you know I wasn't a uh, cocoa puffs uh no cocoa pebbles cocoa pebbles I was I was fruity pebbles fruity pebbles are my thing I don't I don't get it even fruity pebbles I, though, I think fruity pebbles taste... is disgusting what See, I think it's disgusting you're crazy that's crazy talk I would rather have apple jacks I have no beef with apple jacks I like apple jacks apple jacks is pretty fucking good I'd say at this point the only cereal uh and I was talking to my mom last time I helped her with food shopping uh I can't eat Captain Crunch anymore. Uh, that should, that's it a, destroys the roof, the of, roof your mouth. of your mouth. It's like, like why would I, it's like a punishment. Like yes, you. It is still, <laughs> I want to say this thing. It is still delicious. I, 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 you know, I'll say a few years ago I had some. You know, it was there. Like I want to eat something. It was just milk. I'm like fuck it, I'll have some Captain Crunch. I'm gonna do it to myself. I knew what it was doing to the roof of my mouth, but I couldn't stop going back for more. It's like I know, like like I know, like you're destroying the roof of my mouth. Even like, if you I let it like soggy I'm, up a little bit, it'll still. It's fuck still. Me. It's not enough. 
Like when you get to that, it's like just the it's point was that not core, it was that crunchy just, core. You have to, you have to deal with it, man. But uh, I should have shred your mouth, and then you're in pain for the next three I've days. Just, I've had to, I've had to deal with it to the, like where I've hit the point where I'm like, nope, I'm just at a point now where as an adult, I have to make the decision, the conscious choice to say, nah, no, I'm not, no, I'm not doing that to my mouth. You know, there was a, there was a small business that went on Shark Tank, and what they were trying to do is they released milk. That was like pre-serialized. Pre-serialized was that? So, you, what does that even mean? You know how the milk tastes at the end of a bowl of Captain Crunch? Yeah. They packaged that into like a Captain Crunch milk bottle, and they were trying to get it in schools and shit like that. So they did it for that one. They did it for uh, you know the chocolatey cereals, the shit like kicks and and and, and tricks and. You know what's crazy? I saw something. Um. In that vein, I saw someone talking about. I, I saw someone complaining uh, on a timeline the other day on Facebook about uh, about um, first live Bushwick man. Yeah, first live baby. About someone century. complaining about uh, the cereal getting soggy, and they wished there was a way, you know, like it, it would stop happening. And someone showed a bowl, like where it's like a, there's a partition where it's like a nice slot you could slide. It's elevated. Oh, it I just down. saw that. And it's like you could they just milk on one side and the so you don't get I the I just saw that. And you can keep like the perfect portions. Like and it was like that's whoever came up with that was thinking, man. Like that's a game changer right there. Cereal. I'm gonna see if I could pull this up. Cereal bowl. It was uh it was a game changer. It was a game changer. Is this it right here? Uh yes, that most certainly is. Can we can we switch to the uh to the laptop for a second just to show the people? It's a game changer. This cereal bowl right here will keep your shit perfect. Like you get it the way you want, man. I know there's some people I mean I just eat my cereal fast enough to Look like where that, it's though. not a problem. And then the milk that's left over for one more cereal, let's put it to work, man. Yeah, but how 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 realistically, how much money do you think this person made off of this? invention because it all all it takes is a patent i learned that from shark tank you can patent anything the patent i mean it depends on how it's selling i mean but I, i'd say uh seeing it on facebook now the views on these on the video the of majority it, right? of these products get patented before they even go to market they don't want nobody to be able to buy this shit without them owning the exclusive rights to making it so whoever invented this shit before it even came into production he probably had his blueprints he probably pitched a patent Got it done, and, and and now every time someone you know produces one of these bowls, he's probably seeing a dollar fifty, two dollars, even it's if it's good. some other shit. It's good for him, man. I mean, whoever, obviously, whoever had the uh, ingenious idea to create it. I mean, it's uh, it's really what it is. People have been. I mean, I don't know who would thought who thought of it. No, you ever try to invent anything? No, sir. I, don't, I can't say I have. I can't say I have. If you if you were to, let's say someone gave you a, a five hundred grand right now to come up with a product what are you passionate about enough that you would try to make a product about that it wouldn't fuck up your day it wouldn't fuck up my day i i, I don't know man honestly if i mean things i'm passionate of passionate about sports so you got to come passionate up about gaming how about inventing a, a corked bat that doesn't break i mean that's not in the spirit of the game. Like, yeah, if you want to, like, if you sell it as a, a, a joke, yeah. Like, it could be one of those. A uh, gag gift. A gag gift, one of those things, you know, for kids. You know, Backyard Derby, you know, air it on uh, ESPN, you know, for kids, you know, have some fun with that. I can see that. You know, see how far you can hit it with a cork bat. I mean, you should invent something to reverse Sammy Sosa's skin problem. That is sad. That is sad he's, to he's, see, man. He is, he's a ghost. That is, I saw someone call him Casper the Dominican ghost the other day, bro. I'm like, wow. And he can't even argue that anymore. That's he the sad part. Bro, like, he can't. Like, he said it himself. He just took a picture with his wife, and he was wearing a cowboy suit with the fucking like, gun holstered on the is, side. I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it's not the slamming Sammy I remember, man. And he's really pale-faced. I don't know. Like, he, I think he could pale-faced gremlin. I think he could have stopped and gotten away with it and said accident. But who was the dog face gremlin? What, what wrestler was that? I can't remember. Was that one of the Steiners? I can't remember. The dog I, face I believe gremlin. so. Someone who ran with the Steiners. I think it was part of the Steiners. It was part of the Steiner family. So I think we're going to bring up Dave. Dave, you want to come up? 
So uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we want to remind everybody that you're watching Good Morning Bushwick live from First Live. Yes. 219 Central Avenue. And we'll, we'll be right back after this. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. And we don't know where we're going to take you, brother. We're here to tell you that we're back. We're going to the stratosphere. We're out of the atmosphere. All <laughs> we're going everywhere. We don't know where we're going to start. We're here. We started down here, but we want to take it all the way here. Ooh, we want to yeah. bust through that mother. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We oh. can feel the bow. The power of the Bun and Roach team, baby. Bunandroach.com. We're here, and we're going straight to the top. Woo! Where's the top? Yeah. We won't know till we get there, baby. Oh. There you go, Chico. Oh. 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 We're coming for you, for your brain. We want it all. I want everything. What we know we're here to do is to do it good. What are you going to do when we delete you? Yeah, baby. Oh! Ah! Oh! Early, Bobby. Dog. Early. Early. Last night was fun. I can't. Every, every time I look at that, I just have this great smile every time I see that promo, man. <laughs> but here we are. We have. Well, I'm now I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing Dave Pitt is I'm right here. next Dave to us. Pitt. Yeah. The and first. That's guy. making me happy. That's making me smile right now, bro. <laughs> Dave's making What's history up, right now. Oh, the damn. first guest ever. Good morning, Bushwick. Thank you for coming on with us this fine morning, sir. It's good to be here, man. It's and and he here. was definitely someone who elevated our experience on, on Saturday. Saturday night. Well, thanks. I, that was a that was a that was a great night. Like beautiful, inspiring. Night. You know, kind of. I don't know if you told these guys about it, but it was a kind of improv. It was spur of the moment kind of music scene that was going on right here in this spot, and it. Uh, was definitely elevated in in itself, but and it transcended it was, the walls. Like it, it was, it, it, you can feel the energy I spilling think onto that the people street. People probably absorbed all the like energy from it and couldn't like figure out where it was coming from. Like <laughs> yeah. that's how much of it was like here. Like it was just like it was just let's like, waving out of here, man. Like yeah. I don't think people realize. Like, like that was my first time ever being a part of something like that, and it was mind blowing. What's funny is that Dave goes, I'm not a guitarist, but he's in the back tuning it up, and then I see him going on stage, and then I'm like, come on. You're not a guitarist, just like Danny's not a drummer. <laughs> so let's, let's find out the man behind the name. First of all, your last name is... Oh, yeah, my I last wish. name is Pitagorsky, so we go by Pit for sure. Pitagorsky. Yeah, Pitagorsky. Oh, I like that's, that even that's better. Good, that's a good way, man. Like, I mean... Uh, yeah, well, you know, Queens, of my, of my, uh, I'm here... I, Danny and I go way back, but uh, here partially to promote my new album with my band, the Pitt Brothers Band. So my brother and I have a band. His Brad? name is No. <laughs> that's our cousin. That's, cousin. that's your cousin. <laughs> that's your that's your cousin on the other side. Uh, my brother's name's Eric. He's the guitar player in the band, actually. So and, uh, what's your role? You vocalist? You vocalist, singer? keyboard player. Shit, bro. And uh, man my of many talents. Like a real badass guitarist, um, which is why I said I don't play, but I just noodle around a little bit. Uh, so yeah, Dave Pitt, as we go by Pitt, has been, in, you know, it's our family nickname for generations, and uh, it's just the natural name of the band that. So I, we, I want a cool family nickname like that. Yeah, man, <laughs> like uh, the, the Pitt brothers, that just seems that's like, just man, like you see that, I, I think that you see that on a marquee, or, you know, you know, someone has that starting to play a show, like, I think you're just drawn in, because you immediately see it, and for people, you, like, like, you're going to think, like, Pitt is like, I didn't know he had a band. It's already a famous name. It's just yeah. like you, you guys right. just going to slide that shit in there. Yeah, we have a little debate with our cousins. We have some, you know, first cousins with the same name. And they go by, they use two T's in the, when they use it. And we use one T because there's uh, only one T in the name. So it's a it's an ongoing debate in the family. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be surprised if Brad is actually your cousin. Just something like, <laughs> like distant. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Nah, he's actually related to like Obama and, and a bunch of people. Did you see that? Uh, they all no, come from I like didn't. the same family. I don't think he's got the uh, Queens Jewish roots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what part of Queens uh, were you born in? We you grew from? up in Queens Village, Queens Village. a little little nook called Hollis Hills, Hollis Hills, which is kind of on the border of Queens Village, Bayside area. You know? All right. So, how long have you and your brother been an act? Pretty much as long as we go back, like, you know, I mean, we've been playing since we were kids in the, like the, you know, in the, in the apartment, in the bedroom. We started kind of playing and writing, you know, a little more seriously as teenagers, I guess. So we're talking about, you know, 40 years 
30, 40 years, and we've mm. had different incarnations of our band Jeez. over the years, you know? So, like, when we were teens, we were doing stuff locally, like playing just as a duo, or like the local pool club, or here and there, and then went to college, we were in college, went to SUNY Albany, we had a band up there, and we did a lot of shows, just kind of local, local clubs and bars, but we had a kind of a good little thing going there. We were playing, like, you know, two, three times a week, and we had a regular, regular Saturday night gig at a, at a, at a bar oh, up there yeah, in Albany. Like a resident band. Uh, which was great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then, you know, we did a little stint in L.A. with different bands. So we've had f different incarnations of the band, but the current lineup's kind of been in place for, you know, for, what, 10 years now. <laughs> with a, just a new bass player switching in and out. But. So, so you go way back with Danny. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this book? And, and what it means to artists to have a database like this. I mean, I think it's fantastic. This was the seed of Danny's whole idea before. and It, it evolved into the, the shop and, and his company now. But, uh, you know, he's, he's always been an advocate for music and for musicians and trying to get people out there and, and um, you know, also for music lovers to enable them to access, you know, new acts and... and um, this was kind of where it all started, but it's a, it's a great resource, you know, if you're looking for a place to play or looking for a place to go. And, um, you know, sometimes it's nice to touch an actual book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it it's, it's, it's nostalgic. I find, uh, I do a lot of reading on my phone, but I find that I retain the, like, information better. Like, if I'm actually reading it off of paper, I feel like I, like I hold on to yeah. the information better. Maybe it's a generational thing. You know, it's a stronger it's connection. Like, yeah, I think so, too. I mean, something, tact you know, the tactile part about it is... is Think like actually you know. turning the pages, reading it, feeling. It. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like actual like reading a book, paper, actual like on the physically like helps me more than just on the phone. And it's even it's crazier when you're looking through the book and you've played places that you're reading about. Yeah, like yeah. the I can go through this book and and point out a bunch of different venues that I was able to play, and a lot of those places aren't even there anymore. So it's kind of just yeah, it brings you back to that moment. I mean, it's funny for me, man, because like I said, I always like to, you know, remind people I don't, I gotta, I'm not the musician you guys are. Like, I'm not a musician at all, but I love music. <laughs> but uh, it, it's funny, it every time I've picked up the book and like went to thumb, thumb, through, like, thumb through it, the first like page I stopped to look down at is a venue I've you know seen a show at, like I've been to previously. And it's just like, wow, it's funny. Yeah. Like, I haven't played in these places, but even for someone like me who... Well, I find you crazy. always kind of, yeah, when you see a place, you know, like if you're watching a show and you see a place that you've been to or it's like your neighborhood or they're shooting in your neighborhood, you get this kind of connective feeling to it. You know, I remember we used to play a lot of, Danny set up a studio at Arlene's Grocery and we used to play a lot of shows there and it used to be, I don't know if you, you know, Saturday Night Live, the opening credits of Saturday Night Live, not recently, but previously, where it was a shot right in front of Arlene's Grocery and every time I saw it, it was that feeling yeah, like, oh, that that's feeling cool. remembering it. Yeah. I remember he mentioned that Arlene's grocery thing. Yeah, we we spoke about that before, right? We spoke about Arlene's grocery. Shit. Yeah, Arlene's. But grocery. now we're in Bushwick, man. This is first live. This is, yeah, this is first live Bushwick. We want to remind everyone, uh, you can stop in always for uh, coffee here at First Live Bushwick. Two nineteen, two nineteen Central Avenue in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, Bushwick two, two, is one. rising, man. That's what it seems like, you know. The value of the real estate increased with the differentiation uh, with, with with the different people that have moved into this neighborhood and a lot of the people that we grew up with because we're from here everyone was upset about it initially yeah and a couple of years later now you're walking down myrtle avenue you see starbucks and that shit makes you feel good yeah how many people like said that i, I can't wait to get a start they're, 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 like uh we spoke about it we spoke about it plenty of times but it's it's a double-edged sword uh something unfortunately that unfortunate things happen because of it but uh, it well, we still get to meet lot. people like Dave Pitt. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's two sides yeah, yeah. to everything, you know. And I think that's it, it. Says a lot about Danny and the type of guy he is. But you know, he you know lives down the block and he's, yeah. he's got the shop here. But he, he, it's been a, a, one of his main ambitions and goals to bring the community into it, to this yeah. place, you know. And I know he does like political talks and trying to get the vote out here and you know bringing you guys and local talent like the Well Just Villains in here. It's uh, you know. A way to kind of bridge that gap between yeah. the people coming in and it's, and you guys. You it's know? a great show, and man, I, I think that I ultimately think it's uh it's more of people isolating themselves and feeling like 
you know, you have to go out and meet people. Like, if you, you, you people never are know scared. that there are people yeah. like Danny like this. I'm pretty sure there are other business owners out here that have moved into the neighborhood who feel the same way, right. who only feel like a neighborhood can continue to thrive while keeping the people who have always been here. But if people don't want to go out and meet them, then you're always going to, you know, share those thoughts and think the world's right. out to get you instead right. of... It's a mindset, you know. It's about being positive and open, you know, I think, you know. So you don't just play music, though. I don't just play music, but I, um, you know, it's the, it's my main thing. You know, but I was I'm in the advertising business, or was for about 20 years. I kind of am in a little reset mode, which is great, which is why I'm focusing on the music. My brother and I just released a new album um, called Roscoe. We can pull it up if you want to hear a track. Yeah, yes. um, yeah. let's set that up. Let's sure. see. Uh, go to, we can go to our website, pitbrothersband.com. There you go. There you go. You, you work all that. I'm going to take so another wait, sip. you guys were talking about Bushwick clothing lines, right? Yeah, Bushwick clothing lines. Yeah, because uh, we've seen a lot of... What was that what I said before? Bushwick Rising, man. We're going to have to pull that, that shit on a t-shirt. Put, put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bushwick Rising. We don't want anyone to... Uh, Teespring. Take that too soon. We need to uh, <laughs> yeah. jump on that. That means we're going to have to put the design copy, up. Already copyrighted. <laughs> it's already copyrighted, yeah. We got to put We got to put the design on a t-shirt as soon as we get off the air. Put it up on Teespring. All right, so... Get a little Batman Dark Knight Rising going on. This is our current website, and our new album's called Roscoe. That's the artwork I like right it. there. It's named after actually a friend of ours who passed, wow. who was a righteous guy, an artist, uh, just a just an all around amazing human being. But um, Roscoe we this record to him. That was his nickname. His his name was Robert uh, Rob Wickow, but we his nickname was Roscoe. His alias pen name he was an author and a painter but his one of his pen names was roscoe james that's what he would go by like i like that roscoe yeah. james i like that so, it's like a wrestler um, name sounds like get, he dunked it on you this, ferociously this record to him and um that's his like an illustration of his like this there on the uh, cover oh, so shit, if you guys want to hear it's the single or we're, we're, we're calling the first track our single so if you want to hear, you guys. Want yeah, to hear. Let's, yeah let's play something want to hear. I'm, i want to hear it man after where you guys got down saturday i want to hear it all Hitbrothersband.com
Is it? There's yeah, so many different yeah. levels to it. That was there's so much going on that that was. You mentioned your out. brother was a uh, yeah, yeah, master he was guitarist. A yeah, he's. And God damn, bro, <laughs> that was. But equally he's at impressive. The well, we should take a call in, man. Can we do a call in here? Uh, oh, are we set <laughs> up to take calls? I get him on the speakerphone. Oh yeah, put him on speakerphone. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But yeah, he's. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get him on the phone. Okay, let's get him on the phone, man. That was. Uh, but equally impressive as the guitar was the fucking keys, the bro. The keys and the vocals there, man. That was... Uh, yeah, man. We got her... You know, we've been doing it forever together, so we have a real that built connection, up kind of, you know, you know, like almost a telepathic chemistry. Um, and, uh, you know, we worked really hard on this album. We took our time making it. We actually mixed it and produced it with Danny. Yes, I saw that on the uh, on the site, man. Danny, man. That was great production there, man. So that was me... all together. That was, that, was an ama- that was an amazing track right there, man. Thanks. Yeah, we you know there's nine songs on the album. They kind and they all kind of run the gamut of various styles. You know, so if we listen more, or you guys listen on your own. But uh, oh, there's gotta, a bunch of different styles. You know, throughout that kind of just touch on the things that were influenced. That was. By, I yeah. mean, I remember it's pitbrothersband.com. One T. Yes, one <laughs> That's T. Right. One T. That? Always remember one T. One T. Because we don't want the cousins beefing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's all we be, you know. It's it's we beef, but we love. It's love. We don't really beef. It's all love. You know? It's like me and my brother that's, playing that's a cousin relationship, games. though. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, I, that's I mean, you know, what's what's, more, what's what's even deeper and and more complex is the brothers in the band relationship. Yeah. Because you know, it's almost I, like you know, Oasis. Historically, yeah. I mean, we're not, we, you know, we don't go we don't we don't go to fisticuffs on stage or anything like those guys, but. But the, we debate, you know, and we always end up kind of in the place that we belong, you know, we should be. Um, in terms of what, what we have the vision for the music and what we're looking for, but sometimes getting there is a little bit of a process. You know? Yeah, but you guys are, bo- are both still masters of your craft. Well, we're trying. It That's would be sure. a whole different situation if you guys were trying to make something where you guys were like subpar. Yeah. The, the fact that you guys can pull off, where you, you just showed us one song. The song's was name one. was Modern Agony. You said you had plans for a music video for this, right? Yeah, actually. Um, uh, a colleague and a friend of mine, has a co- his name's Matt Desner, he's probably watching right now because I think he just texted me. Um, he's got a company called Creative Taco and he's and he does video production and, he, uh, and uh, he's really talented and he's been wanting to do a music video with us forever. So we just started shooting some test footage for so, for a video for this that song that we just played. So hopefully we'll we need to get, see that, that, get that produced. That, you know, I mean, we can, just... Maybe we'll debut it, debut it on Button Roach. You know? And we got to remind everyone, long live Roscoe James. Yes. Yes, sir. Because it, that's a whole other story in itself. But uh, th- this entire project, yeah, this that's entire something. project seems to be dedicated to the man that we never got the privilege yeah, to meet. Man. Yeah, man. But uh, if you inspire people to make this level of uh, awesome, you know, artwork. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that was a, uh, the artwork was done by a friend of ours. I went, we went to high school together, but uh, just, the uh, uh, the image the on the back of the done, website. No, is that, is that your brother? that's my brother's plan. Yeah, that's my brother and his Les Paul, one of his Les Pauls. Damn, Les Paul. Some original shit. Not yeah. the Epiphone. Not no. the, not the, you don't know about yeah. that. I, I know that's a uh, guitar brand, Les Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah wasn't he an actual guitarist, Les Paul? He was. He yeah. was an actual guitarist. He was. But it's a style of guitar, and there's like many different subpar brands trying to rip the style, and it's not the same as a fucking Gibson. Like, it is a Gibson. Well, yeah, no, you mean the, yeah, the, the knockoffs? The, 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 the Epiphones and the, uh, I even saw a Fender. It was like a Fender Les Paul ripoff one oh, time, yeah, and yeah. Ibanez does that shit a lot. Yeah. Like you, uh, you know what? I was a fucking, I was a manager at Guitar oh, yeah, Center for You know what? I'm not going to yeah. lie. I, I always forget that, and then I have to be reminded of that, that you were a manager at Guitar Center. So I managed the Guitar Center on Northern Boulevard. EP! Yes, sir. Eric Pitt, this is your brother. <laughs> hey, what's going on? You are live. I don't know if you yeah. <laughs> live caught the Good Facebook morning, post Bushwick. this morning, but we're we're on a, we're the first guest on the Button Roach show yeah. called Good Morning Good Bushwick. Morning Bushwick. Broadcasting live out of First Live Coffee House. That's hilarious. Um, we're promoting the Pitt Brothers Band record, Brasco. We just played our uh, awesome. our first single, so we were talking about you. I said, let's see if we can. Get a caller on the phone. Uh, so I'm on the air right now? You are You're live on the air. Hey, everybody, this is great. My boss is sitting right next to me. He'll appreciate that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> in a Bushwick radio station right now. With my brother is promoting our new album. It's actually a TV station. It's a TV, <laughs> TV station. If you go on, go on First Live Facebook, you'll see us. You'll see yourself. Uh, I, might, I might need a job there, so... 
<laughs> cool. So yeah, Bud and Roach are local Bushwick guys. We met the other night at the um, the uh, what was that? All, all, the, way all, the, all, all the way live. All the way live event here on Saturday, which was which really was like on another level. No, it was music, man. It was you should have been here. I don't it know why you didn't come, session. but it was improv. open jam, full like on improv. A freestyle with, jam session. You know, with with MC rapping, same improv you Poetry. know, random singing, random songs. It was it actually came together really nicely. I saw I saw a couple people walking up and down and looked like a runway. That's why I thought it was Oh, that was really the next really night. Very oh, that might have been the night after the Sunday night you guys did the fashion oh, show here, right? Okay. Yeah. Maybe that was it. Maybe that was it. It was it. Saturday night. That's, Awesome. Yeah, man. They're, we they're appreciate great artists. What's the name of the show again? Bunny? What? Bud and Roach. Uh, Good Bud Morning Bushwick. That's, not the, that's the host. They're the host. The name of the show is Good Morning Bushwick. Good Morning Bushwick. And they're broadcasting every day this week. Monday or, through Friday. Monday through a. Friday, period. Um, Sweet. From Bushwick. Bushwick is rising, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Go come on, go right now. Go on Facebook right now. First, life coffee, First live, live coffee house. house. Okay, all right, I'll do that. Right now we're streaming. Go, go right now. <laughs> like, like, like now. All right, hold on. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> that's brotherly, brotherly love right there. <laughs> that's it. That seems about right. That, that, that seems about <laughs> the same way I talked to Lorenzo. Yeah, you're gonna make me call my brother after this. <laughs> Let's get all the brothers on the phone. <laughs> EP, when's our next gig? May here in New York. Uh, May twenty, May seventeenth, Thursday night, we'll be at um, at Bar Court in Ditmers Park, Brooklyn. No, so not too far from here. Right? Not too far. So what we're gonna start doing is, I want to start going out to the events and taking footage with the iPads. So we could just cut up some clips and play them on the show the next day. Yeah, we could do that, right? Yeah, we definitely First need to. Coffee house. I'm clicking on that. Go. We should be streaming right there, right? Eh? If technology is working, we'll be streaming. <laughs> yeah, I believe it's working. Let me see if we're... Uh, we should be up on the site. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Whatever. It's, it's, you'll see. You, tell them to go to buttonroach.com. Yeah, or buttonroach. Is it streaming there, too? Buttonroach.com. We should be live right now. You got to see these guys. Yeah, we're live. They're good looking fellas. I can imagine. I mean... They sound good. <laughs> Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I've never, I've never been told that. <laughs> that okay, that's a first. Buttonroach.com. Bud and Roach. And you know, they're loud and proud, I see, by their website, which I appreciate. <laughs> I, mean, <it's>, uh, <laughs> I think once People you get our visit names, the site, man, we'll know. Yeah, yeah. Once you get the names, it, it all uh, makes sense. It's all. There's all right, no well, hiding. You'll it's, see, it's you'll see and hear yourself. Once you get there. Yeah, we we oh definitely God, live on Bud and Roach. Oh, there we right go. Now. Okay, he's on. He's on. Yeah, I just saw you, then you disappeared. What happened? What do you mean? Is there an ad running? Oh, it might be, it might be an ad <laughs> running. You might, you might be sitting behind an ad right now. Give it about 30 seconds. Yeah, give it give the ad a shot. That's where the revenue comes from. got to thank Twitch for that That's one. That's where the revenue comes from. Steve, check this out. There's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> do, we have, do we have the wide shot? We got to see these guys. <laughs> There we oh, go. Holy shit. We go. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Look, right, they, 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 they even showed, they showed us on the computer, too. <laughs> there we go. There they are. Hey, hey, what's up, fellas? <laughs> what's going Yo, on? What's going on, bro? It's on, We man. love this. Doing good, man. Doing good. So uh, I, I wish you guys all the best of luck with this show, man. You got, You need to come down uh, to yeah, the yeah, station yeah. one day. We, we need you I'm down here down one day live, man. man. For sure. All right, E. It's, it's, Hell yeah. it's, Let's figure the, it out. It's in the ether and it's in the planning. Wait, uh, one quick last question. Bud, raise your hand. <laughs> Wait, where's Bud? Which I, one's Bud? I'm Bud right he's here. On the, he's on the, 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 the there's, there's a delay. Okay, and now Roach, raise your hand. I tell people this <laughs> Bud is black and Roach is reeking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Yeah, Thank you for coming to me on, and you, bro. <laughs> That's hilarious. The pit brothers. You got to patch in. That's you know, it's all about the callings. <laughs> well, we can have guests calling. Uh, yeah, well, we'll, yeah. Once we start getting the Skype video callers in, we we'll get some crazy uh, characters calling. We're gonna do a lot of crazy shit. 
<laughs> but, but, um, fun things happen. We, we still got a lot. We still got a long way to go. We, Listen, we, we still here with, with, I'm with here, Dave man. Pitt. I'm here. So we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back after this. Cool. This coffee is delicious. You know, I don't really <laughs> drink coffee. <laughs> What you come out with this coffee to live in an empty cup? That's what you come out the gate with on me, man. I mean, it is coffee for music people. And music, music for coffee, coffee people. A good coffee will wake you the fuck up in the morning. Remember you know what else will wake you up in the morning? <laughs> good morning, Bushwick, hosted by us too. But I'm coming through Facebook. I mean, here, first live. Where is first live? Hey, Bushwick, baby, he's killing, killing me, bro. Facebook. He's killing me right now. <laughs> Like first live Bushwick. Yeah. We're from Bushwick. We are direct, Bushwick. Pick up your damn cup and pretend right you're right drinking the cold. Here at first live Bushwick. The video. You know what else will wake you up in the morning? Good morning, Bushwick. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> right, right now, are we cutting a promo or are, are, are we live? No. <laughs> Where can people go to find out what's happening in Bushwick? Buttonroach.com and firstlive.us. Mm, this coffee this is, is delicious. Vape, right? Yes, it most <laughs> certainly <laughs> is. It's in my jacket. Can't be doing it on camera. No, definitely uh, not on camera. Not on camera. <laughs> not on camera. <laughs> oh man, we want to thank oh, you all for being shit. live with us this morning once again on Good Morning Bushwick. I wonder if the audio was going through. Uh, no, over the no, 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 I would hope not. But uh, you guys, if it would if you just guys got to, uh, you know, I mean, when the show's show hosted with, by Button Roach, you you got to expect shit come as a joke. It shouldn't like should, come as a surprise with our name. And, and most of you guys already know us for the we last few years being break. on there. But we still here with Dave Pitt, man, and I, you know, we, we still got a few things to to speak about. I want to bring up your website again. Let's go over here. Now, speak to us about the rest of the album. Like, what what are the plans? Because I know you have a, you know, you mentioned you have the uh, the video for Modernogamy in the currently works, in production. Yeah. yeah. What uh, else are we doing for Roscoe? Um, you know, we're trying to, to just get it out there. I trying to get some radio play so we can get some get booked in some of these like jam band type of festivals that are going on, like Mountain Jam and uh Peach Festival and things like that. So but right now we're just kinda of doing it local, you know, doing our shows in the city. Um getting the word out, you know, digitally and uh are you guys classically trained? Do you guys know music theory? We, you know, to an extent, yeah. We took, you know, I, I, my brother took the guitar lessons for probably fifteen years, and yeah. you know, I took piano lessons. You know, the classical piano never really stuck with me, but, but I certainly helped, and I definitely, you know, we know theory, and you know, to to a certain degree, for sure. That's why I was so afraid on Saturday to go on stage you because really? I don't know music theory. I, I, I play by ear mostly, so I, I'll right. listen. I'll try to match it up. But then I'll just keep simple riffs. I'm like fucking Kurt Cobain. I write simple songs. Yeah, you can't let that hold you back. There's so many people. I mean, look at Jimi Hendrix. You know, he didn't know music theory. He well, just, he's also a guitar you know, god. Right. So that's what I mean. You can't let <laughs> some that, people. I mean, that just, kind just of thing a natural you talent. Sometimes you just do it. You know, just a natural talent, man. For yeah. so, and you're the yeah. one that volunteered me for that shit. You said you were gonna do it, so they, they well, needed a guitar. You were playing guitar the other night. Yeah, it sounded yeah. good. That was you all night, right? I don't know. Nah, there was another dude, too, and the the dude he, had, he was that he guy was, was way good. better than 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 I am. I'm uh, a good songwriter. That's that, that's what I do. I write simple yeah. songs and and I put out simple music. But well, that's cool. I didn't. As far yeah. as you know, shredding and, and and ripping shit down to the fucking ground the way you guys did on that <laughs> track right there. Just even, even if you guys go on pitbrothersband.com right now and just re-listen to Modernogamy and listen to the keyboard solos in the back and the guitar just, solos. Come on, that shit is fucking. Yeah, we got uh, we took our time, you know, making this record and we didn't settle for any tracks that we weren't you put feeling your, really great about. So I think that uh, people are the toughest critics, but if you don't like it. You, uh, I, I think that as the artist, I've you have to want to. Yeah, I've learned that you have to want to put it out there. You can't. Yeah, and uh, you know, something. but you, that, you know, there's a pitfall though. There. There's a pitfall, no pun intended, but because you, I've always found that <laughs> that I will we'll do a, re a recording, and the only thing I hear is the mistakes. So the only thing I hear is the stuff I'm not happy with, and it's it's in the past held me back a little bit from maybe promoting it or putting it out there in a way that it should have been because I was overthinking it or you know focus too much on the on those little things you know and sometimes there's production quality issues that's kind of, you know or you know if it's a performance that i wasn't totally totally thrilled with mm -hmm. um which is why we treated this record the way we did we you know to make it at a level that you know that that feeling is not going to be there but even that feeling is is a pitfall because sometimes you feel that way but the world doesn't feel that way yeah you know what i mean so for an album that has nine songs, how many songs did you write and record that you narrowed it down to these? 
Uh, well, we have a big book of songs that we've written over the years, so it's kind of a it was just a sort of a selection process. Okay, which one are we going to record? And there's a back and forth there with material choice between my brother and I. We kind of figure it out, and we, you know, sometimes it's a point of debate, sometimes it's not. But um, we chose these for various reasons. I think a lot of it was the subject matter. They're all kind of about friendship and family and that kind of connection. And, and they all have some kind of, every song either has some a reference or a subject matter or you know, even some writing that Rob, that Roscoe was involved with. So these songs in some way relate to him, you know. Okay. That's crazy. And now, now I'm interested I mean, the one to that's listen called to Gloria, the entire it, thing. It, you I know, wanna, the, yeah, like, aside from maybe Gloria, which is about my wife, but. Gloria. <laughs> now, that, now, now that's the next one we need to be paying attention to. That's a good one. That's a good one. I might have to dedicate that one to my wife. Depending on I the think context. I met your wife the other night. Yeah, right? yeah. She was the one giving me misinformation before I go on stage. About what? About everything. <laughs> <laughs> about JT, about Bruno Mars, about... Uh, you still on JT? <laughs> you still on JT? Well, I'm always going to bring it back to JT. I was listening to JT on the way here, bro. Oh, man. You know I preach JT. But it's always interesting when you see... Because uh, we know we have the Reverb Nation thing that we do with uh, Hot New Music Videos. We have a oh, website yeah. that we have a little contract with Reverb Nation that they blast us out to the 5 million artists. They're actually doing the email blast on the 16th. When, when is that? Three days. Right. So in three days, they're sending out a campaign to about 5 million artists for them to submit their music videos. And then we have another show called Hot New Music Videos, H&MV, where it's like TRL. So we play the music videos, all that. But one thing that I see when we get the submissions from all these artists, because I got to go through thousands of submissions, is that People's stories when they put together an album, I've, I've met a lot of people who have like a, a five track album and they only wrote five tracks. Like they just, they yeah. did this and right, here, right. And did this and here. And I'm guilty of that myself, like in the past. We always kind of just made music and before we could even mix, master anything properly. And you, you look at the credits on Roscoe, you can obviously see that there was a, some professionalism put behind us. So... The problem with most artists, and this is something that I've dealt with myself, is that we're too eager to put the product out, and we don't become obsessive about it enough to the point where people like you would actually go and go through an entire Rolodex of songs that you've written throughout the years, pick and choose which ones was, is going to represent what you're trying to do the best way, and then get it pro professionally recorded in the best way possible. Yeah, you know, it, it helps to, to be working with people like Danny, and uh, you know, it, there's a you know, there's 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 different things that hold you back with in terms of production. I mean, and, and I think there's two sides to that. But I totally agree with you. But to me, there's also something to be said about just if you're inspired, you have some stuff, and you just want to get it done and get it out there. You know, I think for technology some people, sort of allows for that. If you had a moment in your life where I think it could go, but like it works both ways. I do feel some people go yo like what you said first, and like hey, this is it, and don't put everything behind and think I just thought this and here take it. And then there's people who do do that, get the five, six track real fast EP. And it, it, there's a lot of heart and emotion behind it because of where they were at that moment in their life. So, I mean, I th it works good, good both ways. And I think, uh, you know, it depends on the person, you know, the actual artist doing the work. Because if you're not really, you know, putting your emotion and time into it, you can yeah. still, you know. And, you know, and like everything, and sadly, you know, there's, there's a, sometimes a matter of resources, you know, if you, yeah. you know, and luckily technology now enables you to do certain things at a high level, even in your bedroom, but, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, if you really want to do something professionally, you need access to those yeah. resources, and luckily, you know, you have patrons of the arts and sponsors like Danny that, that help us get it done, you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's hard to do it at that high level, you know? It's also the positioning of the industry at the time, because there was a time when, you know, early grunge rock where acoustic records that were being played on on radio shows like i remember there was a dave Grohl clip on howard stern that was everywhere millions of fucking listens and follows and all this shit and it was just him on the radio playing everlong and we're not part of that industry no more yeah we're, we're so far past that shit you can't just blow people away like that no more no and it's not going to get shared the way you want it right. to get shared but i think you can like you can do a performance that that's mind-blowing but i think because of I don't know if it's dilution or the fact that oversaturation. You know, yeah, yeah, that, Over, that it's, it's oversaturated. All out there, you know, it's you got to get uh, get the word out. You know, because I think there's a mil I know there's a million artists that are blowing minds. You know what I mean? And you even just you never heard them. You yeah, know what I mean, I think every I think there's for every artist we are 
tired of hearing on the top 40s spin in that radio cycle, there are another at least two or three that will blow our minds that we just haven't heard because they lack the resources of these people, which is, I think, the, the great undoing of, you know, everything, but I think that's what keeps music great because that keeps these people, you know, with that skill level from, I want to say, being drowned out or having that voice be altered because they're still, still doing what they want to do for the love of it. Right. And then not being forced to, you know, mold and get and I, a box. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I hear, I see. There's a theme going here right, with the stuff we're talking about, which is this dual-sided mindset of yeah. okay, well, there's something good and bad in pretty much everything that we're talking about, you know, which is a life lesson, I guess. But uh, yes, yeah, definitely a life lesson. I wanted to show you. I don't know if we can we pull this up real quick. I just want to show the people hot new music videos. All these oh, videos are videos that were submitted by independent artists. So even if you go down, these were the official Reverb Nation selections from the uh, the last campaign that we ran a couple months back. And a lot of these artists... So you guys, who chooses the... I choose all the videos. Choose, so they uh, send them in and you choose them. Yeah, and everything is pretty much under my watch on this site. So we're in. So whenever, <laughs> we just whenever, need a video. <laughs> whenever you guys have the video, then we have definitely have cool. a, prom, uh, a product to... to push it out to because that's is... funny because the, the, that brings up a, a an experience that we tend to have in the studio when we're working my brother and i and i like to have a deadline so like you know matt my friend matt we've been talking about making this video and we did some test shooting and now it's like okay this we we got this we're talking about if we okay we need we want to get this up here so now we have a something to work towards you know so i think that to me that always ignites you know, it ignites the passion to work and the energy to put into it and also kind of makes you focus a little more. You know, we didn't, when this record, we didn't do that. We purposefully chose to not give ourselves a deadline to finish it. So, and mind you, it took like three years to make, but but um, because of that, you know, I think, again, it's a, it's a two-sided thing. Yeah. I like personally having the deadline because, you know, you're working towards something and, you know, you got to get it done. And obviously you don't cut corners to get there, but you sometimes have to burn through the night or whatever it is. My brother, on the other hand, likes to work in that looser way where we don't have a deadline. Let's just take as much time as it needs to get it done the way we want it and get it done, you know, perfectly yeah. in our minds. And it works both ways. But, you know, I like the idea of knowing, okay, we have this outlet here. Yeah. Let's get a video done so we can put it up. Yeah. It's yeah. funny because we, we went through that similar situation when we was coming back live on the air. We knew we was going to come back on TV this was uh, last year. It was probably like October or something. And everyone was just kind of sitting around like, all right, we, we know what we want to do. We just don't know when we're going to do yeah. it, how we're going to do it, or where it the felt, fuck we're going to do it. It felt, it felt, you know, I don't liberate to uh, set the deadline when we uh, decided Once we were going to do it. January 1st. When we said, we sat down, and I mean, truthfully, I was ready, to, you know, we were all ready, but I think giving ourselves the time to grow and not. I think that we have, when we decided went like yo let's go today we're back let's when's the next Monday the what, product, days? the let's product go? wouldn't have been as good it if we didn't no. I think given the deadline setting it and setting to achieve all those goals by uh, you know the deadline set date I think definitely stretching it out while making things I don't want to say a little stressful at least we knew what we were up against and we had time to you know achieve it set out and get there and. And once that day came, once we were live January first, it was just it like was, it was like a great unveil, like all the fucking work that we put in. And it's funny because it was it wasn't until that last week that everything really came together. Yeah, because everything was just conceptual right. until the, until that point. It was that last week and a half that I had to go to Best Buy, I had to go to this right. place, I had to p get this thing, and then. Well, you that's the interesting thing about the universe. You know, it's like you put inner energy into something and you have an intention to get something done. And then because of that, or I think because of it, or, or, you know, I think that energy helps to to give inertia to whatever project you're doing. But then then circumstances start presenting themselves that enable you Small to shit. do the things like this place showing up in your life. You know what I mean? Sorry, I got to we're not taking another call today, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, but if we did, this guy would be good. He's a, he's a character. I, I thought your brother was calling back. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta set this Skype up. Let's see if we get. I think we could get the Skype up by tomorrow. By tomorrow we'll have the Skype up. I want to start calling people and then taking calls and all that shit. But oh yeah, so wait, I was talking about the fact that 
you know, the universe presents yeah. the opportunities you need at the right time, ideally. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't even recognize that it's Yeah. You don't even recognize that, you know, to, it's you know, you say hindsight's 2020. Yeah. You don't know that uh, you know, something's the perfect opportunity for what you want to do until later on. Right. Like you don't know that you just got what you need handed to you like this. Right. And sometimes yeah. it unfolds over the course of time. Yeah, it know? takes it has to, you know, it's, it's layers. It's not and I think people something we spoke about, you know, success, you know, people think it's one step, two steps there. Things could happen just multiple different ways that all need to come branching off of something that happened. Right. And it's just there's no set way for it ever to happen. So you know I mean I'm I'm glad that uh that we managed to make all of these connections because we we're in a position in our life right now where it's just a matter of time. It's not even a matter of effort or anything because that, all that shit is built into us already. We we show up, we do this shit. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. If we do this every day, let's say for the next year, you think we're still going to be in the same position of life? No. Nobody <laughs> here is going to be in the same position of life. No one. Everybody here is going to be in another fucking level, bro. Because consistency is going to lead to that success. And I think just because Dave Pitt is who he is, we need to bring him on the Bud and Roach show. Bro. Yes, we need we, Dave Pitt on Bud and Roach. We need Dave Pitt on a Monday night. We need you on a Monday night, bro. Oh, the actual Bud and Roach show. We'll be back after this. We'll get the brothers. The following announcement has been paid for by Bud and Roach. Bud and Roach show. Bud and Roach show. Bud and Roach show. Bud and Roach show. We don't know where we're going to take you, brother. We're here to tell you that we're back. We're going to the stratosphere. We're out of the atmosphere on it. We're going everywhere. We don't know where we're going to start. We're here. We started down here, but we want to take it all the way here. We want to bust through that mother. Oh, yeah. We can feel the power. The power of the Bun and Roach team, baby. BunandRoach.com. We're here, and we're going straight to the top. Where's the top? We won't know until we get there, baby. There you go, Chico. We're coming for you. For your brain! We want it all! I want everything! What we know we're here to do is to do it good! What are you gonna do when we delete you? Yeah, baby! Woo! Ah! Woo! <laughs> yeah, we definitely... Well, there you go. Monday's 8 p.m. I like the graphics. Monday's 8 p.m., bro. I like the graph. 8 p.m. So what are you guys, wrestlers too? You have a wrestling team as well. Uh, no, we, we're just no, lifelong just wrestling, wrestling enthusiasts. <laughs> Hardcore classic wrestling fans. Wrestling we we can't really say that can't we follow it these wrestling days. Wrestling it's a classic right, wrestling. Road show Monday night. Monday night. Sounds good. We get lit, bro. Yeah? Oh, yeah. It's a... So is it, you, you walk into the studio, you're just going to walk into a fucking cloud. Yeah, <laughs> even before you get to the studio, just walking into the building. Walking like into the, the building. That entire space. building it just, yeah. just stinks. It's bro. like my apartment building. It's like, God damn, son. <laughs> I want to say stinks. I, know, I love the smell. I think stink is like uh, something I don't like mean stink, odor. Like, in a good way. An in aroma. A good way. In a good yeah, way. it stinks so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it stinks so good. <laughs> oh, shit. So... <laughs> Now we have this show, bro, we, we need to do a few things. We need to set the calendar up. We need to know who's coming on all the time. I want to start booking calendar. people ahead of time. We need to start bringing on people in other states, other countries. Patch them in, right? Uh, yeah, it's a global situation. I do believe our current setup for tomorrow is, I guess, tomorrow or Thursday. Isn't that from Denmark? I guess tomorrow? Yeah, Tobias. We got people from... Oh, he's going to call it. Cool. That's yeah. crazy. Is it, can we get a video feed from that? Can we set it up? Sure. Yeah, we're going to set this shit up. Bree, Lovely. Bree on Thursday. Bree from the slap. Bree. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Ra. Ra from Well Dressed Villains on Friday. I'm looking forward to that one, too. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to Ra, man. That's going to, uh, I feel like that's going to that, be that, 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 cool. that conversation. That's a, that's, an, uh, that's a conversation that I feel is going to be fun. I think we, we can call that a theocratic conversation. <laughs> And he, he knows exactly what the hell yes, we're sir. talking about. Rock gets that. A couple, a couple people listening right now are going to get that one. We don't want to offend too many people, so that's an insider for you guys. We were all raised Jehovah's Witnesses. That I heard you he, mention he gave it, it the other He day. gave it up already. We were all raised J-dubs. It was, uh, <laughs> they called it the theocratic ministry. So then you, have you transcended that mindset, or oh, are you still... Yeah. You we know, were never really just, there they came to mentally. The somebody bought in. Is that basically? I mean, my, my mom... <laughs> She raised my family like that. Right. So, you know, one by one, everybody started going their own way. I fell off the deep end early. 
<laughs> but I actually was, you know, so deep in it that I got baptized. And then when you become excommunicated from a from a religion, like people who are still there, they're not allowed to speak to you. Well, I think it depends on the religion. But yeah, it's uh, from, for this particular one. Yeah, it was uh, it was it's fucked it, up. It, it's, it's it's tough to deal with, man. That so, means there's there's a loss of the essence of the religion because any religion is more of a broad universal connection to something bigger you know yeah. what i mean and if you're starting to cut people off and not that we're going to talk religion today you know not today we'll save that for the button road show yes. <laughs> save that for we have but i have a lot of insight on that for sure you know? so where a can lot. people find you how can people connect with you um via our website pitbrothersband.com our facebook page one t one t one t pit brothers band facebook page um you can send us a message there our email is pitbrothersband at gmail.com you can send us an email there and we look forward or to having that music me. video <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just call them I just call them just, just call them line yeah. uh I, I definitely look forward to that video i look forward to hearing the rest of that album man i'm gonna go online and yeah listen check to it that, out man. it's cool You'll so i look forward to it. definitely listen to the rest of that man um so we're gonna we're gonna take a peek at that as yeah. soon as we get off the air as soon as we get off the air yeah, yeah. yeah. probably gonna listen to that uh so and you can check out our show. It's here in Brooklyn at a place called Bar Chord, which Bar I haven't Chord. been to. My brother goes there. He says it's kind of like a musician's kind of a place. So uh, Bar Chord. Bar yeah. Chord. And, that's uh, a, that's the next show coming up, next right? Show uh, what day is in that New again? York in May. Um, May 17th, I think he said it was yeah. a Thursday night. It's a Thursday night, he said. Yeah. May 17th. Sound like yeah. that. Boston, Boston. And then we're, we're booking we're, our goal here today. You're going, uh, you're we're, going to Austin? We're, we're planning to go to Austin to do a show, um, hopefully the last sure. weekend in April. But we're working on booking that today. Cool. I want to go to Texas, bro. I want to go to Texas. Bro. Let's go. We're bringing a whole troop down with us. We'll, we'll, I've we'll, never we'll, been. We'll trip it out there. We'll take the Merv out. They and say he's got Merv. A he's got him. You know about the Merv? We know yeah. about Merv. We know about Merv. The Merv is waiting. It's waiting in its, in its spot, ready to Merv. be released on the world. I'm excited, bro. And I'm it's gonna be like excited, uh, nice man. dreams, you know. You know the Ni movie, nice dreams. Nice dreams. No. Oh come that. on, it's a Cheech and Chong movie. Cheech and Chong. They had the truck. You know? One Cheech and Chong. Ice cream truck. Ice cream truck. Listen, the we, is not going to be like we're that. stoners, but we're also young. <laughs> yeah, we are young. <laughs> talk to me we're about Jay and Silent Texas, Bob. Right. Not in Texas. Maybe when we go to yeah, Massachusetts. Exactly. Say, talk to us about Jay and Silent Bob, not about Cheech and Chong. It's a different generation. Yeah. Of course, you well, can. I'm old. What can I tell you? You can follow us at Button Roach Show. At of course. Button Road Show. Uh, you got to go to FirstLive.us. You got to go to ButtonRoach.com. You got to follow him. Well, uh, you can follow me at Mister Underscore Zoe Taylor. Uh, it's just Mr. Underscore Zo Taylor. That was pretty simple. Wait, right? I think the other night we were talking about a hoop game, like a Brooklyn Queens basketball game. That I we do had believe to we were yeah. talking about that, man. We were talking that, some that smack came the other up. night. Like, we yeah. did have like so. the smack talk come about basketball. We are gonna play we some have to ball. get that going uh, when it gets cold, when it gets warm out. We'll yeah. set a nice little friendly wager. And uh, we're we'll filming everything. We're gonna film it. <laughs> everything is going on the show. I mean, we're talking a game. You're gonna have to get in shape because you're gonna be playing. So I get in shape, but I've always been a shooter. I mean, well, you better be able to run up and down the court to get the ball. <laughs> I'll do that. I remember there was one time we all went to play the football early in the morning, and um, I was the only person on the sideline smoking a. a I showed Newport up hungover from work the night before. <laughs> I'm like, two uh, hours I don't late. need to. I don't need to run. Like, <laughs> I don't need to practice. Well, we could start with a little half court. Through like that. two interceptions in five minutes, just sat back down. Yeah, I remember that. Again, one. you can follow me at I'm King Roach. We're gonna be here every weekday. Every weekday, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. First live Bushwick. Eastern time. Of Eastern course. Standard Time. Uh, 219 Central Avenue, Bushwick, Brooklyn, New York. If you guys are on Facebook, you can watch this live stream every day at First Live Coffee House. Yes. That's the name of the page. First Live Coffee House. And if you guys are stoned at home, you can go on buttonroach.com. That's where we're at. Yes, that's where <laughs> we're at, man. And uh, once again, every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. And Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern yes. time. 8 p.m. ish, Eastern Standard Time. We thank you guys for we'll tuning We'll be back. In. We love you guys. Thanks. The realness. The realness. Got you stuck with the, the realness.